Are you on steroids? It's Manny Motoraker on the UFO Buster Network! Yay! I'm back, Manny, here, UFO Buster Radio, episode number, I have no idea. Actually, I think it's like uh, 320? No, 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 actually, (laughs) I'm a bit confused. Actually, this is episode number 520 of the UFO Buster Radio podcast in general. It is, um... I don't know. In many ways, I feel like I accomplished some shit. 520 episodes. And then other times I think, geez, what the fuck did I do in my life? The last, uh, what, three three years? Maybe a little bit more than that? Three and a half years? I feel like it's time to retire. Where is my retirement check from the government? It's not the government. It's the government. Government! I need my podcast retirement check. Because I think I'm about... I'm about uh, running ashore on this, and uh, it's time to abandon ship. Nonetheless, today is Tuesday. We got some shit to talk about today, but uh, I just want to make sure you guys who are not listening to the Dark Horror Podcast, you got to get over there. Find it. It was crazy last Saturday with, uh, with Chris Garcia, psychic extraordinaire. And, you know, it's it's weird how you go through these things like, you know, Pucky led me towards Chris. And I was like, all right, why not? Guy in San Antonio, why not? He lives right here in the city. Let's see what he's all about. And at first, the, the strange thing is that Chris is, is like so, so humble. Like he's not over there with a big psychic chip on his shoulder saying, hey, test me. I dare you. I dare you. The shit just happens. And last Saturday, geez Louise, he was on a roll. Then shit got crazy, technically wise. So, yeah, he's uh he wants to come back. He'll be back on the on the dark horde sometime in the future, maybe even in July. But I'm trying to work something out because last Saturday I also went to the uh, Yorktown Memorial Hospital, which is part of the dark horde. It was all twelve, I think, or nine, some shit like that. But it's a haunted place, an abandoned hospital, abandoned in the uh, mid-80s. And uh, lots of people go there and have a whole bunch of crazy experiences. And I was there with the missus. And when I tell you, uh, yeah, it, it is a wild feeling to walk into a place like that. And it doesn't help that you have someone guiding you on a tour and giving you the business. And then you feel like someone's watching you, like, Maybe a thousand someones are watching you. And then someone that's with you on that tour gets sick and has to leave because the pressure is too much on them. It was a crazy time, but um, I'm trying my best starting tomorrow. I will try my best to get someone from that particular property to come on the Dark Horror podcast. And hopefully I can have them 
and then Chris, and then we'll just have a big old paranormal party on there and um, see what Chris picks up. And this person that I'm trying to get on had so many experiences there that um, it's just crazy. It really is. I don't understand what anyone, with all the things that have gone uh, or happened to them, would even continue to be part of that uh, situation there. It's just nuts, but I'm not going to tell the story. It's something they need to come on here and, and talk about, but I'll reach out to them tomorrow and see if I can get get a game plan going and get them on here. Today's episode, we got three stories, as usual, and uh, some of them are, are fascinating. Some of them, a lot of people are taking the story for face value, but we're going we're gonna to dig a little deeper with a little math. I know Dre loves that. It won't, it won't be in meters, for sure. But we'll dig deeper into that, and, and then we got to go to where we got to go every week, to the unusual story. And this time it's not even Paradolia Pete, to be honest. Jeez. Let's start this uh, podcast by playing this track. And then I'll be back. I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out of my mind if I find a way to get it when I do it, I can live it and forget it Cause I hate how much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings I just wish you understood the gravity but you got low sinners I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out my mind Yeah, now I'm so lost, where do I go? I was in a chase, caught a flat on road It was all love, X no O I was feeling rich, but we turned out bro North Pole, life's so cold Lukewarm love, just took it to the stove You were bad, news all kind, no pro We grew apart fast I guess we was reaping what we sold in I guess we was unequally yoked in Guess if we was putting on the show then. Guess we should've tried to take it slow then. Guess I let my feelings take control Guess I let my demon take the will Used to think that we'd be growing old Now I can't believe that it was real It was back in late December when I did it I just wish I could forget it how much I love it, oh I hate how I just love to catch a feeling yeah. And you told me that you understood the gravity, but now I know you didn't I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember Don't fucking scream at me. Where's you my dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you. With your fucking 48% body fat. <laughs> that Arnold Schwarzenegger clip. I wasn't even going to play it today, but Ronnie Dawson said something about it in a live chat. So that goes out to Ronnie Dawson and the rest of the guys that are in the live chat right now on Spreaker.com. We got Green Man. We got uh, Dre and Mrs. Dre Davina. Uh, We also have Idle Space Dave. And let's see who else we got here because I'm actually scrolling backwards to be honest. Everything happens in reverse because these guys are way too game vets here are too quick 
The typing is too quick. I can't even keep up with it. Let's talk about the first story for today. Here's one for the record books. For you, know, <laughs> for you guys who love soccer, could you imagine if your favorite soccer star, all of a sudden you hear on the news, is not making it to training camp or to warm up or whatever the hell they else, whatever they do. I don't know what they do. It, it, because they got abducted. Could you imagine that? It turns out that happened down in Chile. I don't know how far north the uh, Chilean soccer team goes. Who knows if we even see any of their players up here, or if, fuck anywhere else for that matter. But Guillermo Marino was abducted. Yeah, soul snatching aliens were blamed for his lateness for training in Chile. I don't know. Could you say that's incredible? I, I don't get it. But anyway, former Argentine football player, uh, Guillermo Marino, he, apparently he turned up late one time to training camp. And um, his reason was, like, hey, coach, uh, tu sabe, uh, you know, uh, the ETs, they come and they take me and I met to here late. Right, Guillermo, really. But the funny thing is, the story is not being told by Guillermo. no. <laughs> Because heavens, for, heavens forbid he would want to out himself. No, he's got players, ex-team members that can do that for him. Gustavo Lorenzetti, this guy Italian, what the fuck is this? I thought it was Chilean or Argentinian. I don't know where the fuck the story is coming from. It's all over the place. Uh, I guess maybe uh, Guillermo is in Chile now. Who fucking knows? Or vice versa. But uh, Gustavo decided he's going to tell all. Now why? I don't know. I mean, personally, if I was uh, Guillermo, I'd be kicking some ass right now. I'd be pissed off as hell at uh, Gustavo. Come on, mind your fucking business, Gusti. But anyway, he decided to tell the story. And apparently the two were playing together on this particular club um, called the uh, Universidad de Chile under manager Jorge Sampoali. I think I got that right. I'm not sure. And this happened between 2011 and 2013 when they played together. But apparently Gustavo was telling people the story of Guillermo. According to them, and here's a quote, he says that he arrived late to one training because he was abducted by aliens. He gave an entire explanation of what he felt and the rest of the story, how it actually went down and why he was late. Isn't this funny? Like, would you... I don't know. Like, if you're working somewhere, and uh, somebody shows up late, and you know that it's a trustworthy person, they're on time every damn time, they're early, and then they show up late one day, and uh, disheveled, there's a $10 word for you, disheveled, and basically, they say, I'm, I'm late, because I, I was abducted by aliens, and I got broke. And then they scurry onto their desk, and get into a computer. What do you do? Do you believe them? <laughs> do you take them seriously? Do you really feel like they're being honest? Or maybe they had the shits and they couldn't get off the shitter. But it was better to say I got abducted by aliens than saying I was stuck on the shitter. I don't know. You decide. But anyway, here's how the story goes. According to this... um, what the player was saying was that he left and he came back two days later because he was kid kidnapped by aliens. Not just any kind of, yeah, of aliens, by the way. Not any kind of... Because they actually do some crazy shit. These aliens actually abduct you. Then they take your soul, if you have one. Then they analyze it. But while they're ripping your soul, basically, they take care of you. They baby you. They mother you. They make sure everything's okay. Your hair is done. You get full meals. You're nurtured. You got all your nutrition going. And then they bring you back late to your practice. The funny thing is, is that Gustavo in the story says that he completely and utterly believes that Guillermo was telling the truth. 
He was missing for two days. He did have his soul ripped out by aliens and then motherly uh, taken care of by these ETs, wherever the fuck they went. Because uh, apparently he doesn't recount what Guillermo said uh, where he was taken. Isn't that crazy? Gustavo says that uh, uh, basically the way that Guillermo explains it to you and the fact that you know that he is a believer, and actually Gustavo apparently is a believer as well. He reads books about it. And so he didn't have any other opinion. All he could do was believe him. Now the story says that um, it's not known whether or not uh, Guillermo actually went to the coach, Jorge, and explained to him why he was late as being of uh, E.T. origin, missing time, having his soul I mean, if someone, <laughs> come on, someone goes to work, they tell their boss, hey, I'm sorry, Bob, but I had my soul ripped out of my body for like two days. Sorry I'm late today. Like, give the fucking guy a pass. It's okay. He just got reunited with his soul. Let him go. Let him be. Give him a fucking bonus. Maybe he needs something to keep him from uh, falling into that same trap again. Uh, so it's really weird because the person he told the story believes him because he's into it as well. And we don't know if uh, the boss already found out about it, but who who knows? Who freaking knows? Or he had a uh, two-day bender. Felt like he was uh, having his soul ripped out of him, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's sober again. So it's a good idea to come up with the alien excuse. Uh, there's more to the story in uh, the uh, description. So click on it. Take a look at it. Uh, I still think that it's uh, kind of like a foul thing to do by uh, old Gustavo to out Guillermo like that. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if Guillermo actually has a response to this or whether he certifies the story as being correct, or he's going to hunt down Gustavo and beat his Chilean Ar Argentinian ass for what he's talking. Who knows? Who freaking knows? Uh, Green Man says that uh, Coke leaves... Uh, what? Coke leaves our hell of a drug. It, you, hell. They are in South America. There could be a lot of Coke leaves going around to get the training going. He probably took a couple and left it in his pocket and took off. That's all I know. Completely nuts. Check out the story in the description. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I hope that there is a response to this. But uh, we'll see.
sure you better walk away Aye. If you try to come closer I'ma give you some closure Before you know what it's over So run away, run away I'm not trying to hurt you But I will if I have to I'ma tell you what I do Run away, run away Baby, I'm a fighter, never backing down Baby, I'm a soldier, standing my ground So if you're gonna fight me for my heart Are you gonna get these battle scars? Baby, I'm a tiger, 20 steps ahead Baby, I'm a viper, one bite to dead So if you're gonna fight me for my heart Are you gonna get these battle scars? Baby, I'm a fighter, never backing down Baby, I'm a soldier, standing my ground So if you're gonna fight me for my heart Are you gonna get these battle scars? Baby, I'm a tiger, 20 steps Somebody asked me, why do you play music? What's this music thing? Why do you, why do you, why ask why? Why, keep moving. Get your ass moving. There's no fucking questions. Honestly, the real answer is uh, I find that entertaining. And it gives me time to get from one story to the next, to be honest. But uh, that's just the way it is. There's your answer. Ask me another question again. I will tell you no lies. This particular story is everywhere. Like, I, I pulled it up. I saw it yesterday. I pulled it up today. And they're in double digits now as far as the news outlets that are talking about this. And by tomorrow, it'll be three times as much probably 40, 50 different ones all over the place. You probably already saw it. We have a team of scientists that are saying that there are at least 36 intelligent alien civilizations in our own galaxy known as the uh, shitty way, uh, the Milky Way. Yeah. 36. This is a quick turnaround, right? What the hell is going on? We went from scientists saying it's uh, completely impossible, there's nobody out there, we're all alone. We're by ourselves. Then we have Avi Loeb, who said that Amuamua was an alien craft. People went bonkers. He still got his job, I think, so he's okay. Last week, we had a scientist that said the reason why we don't see aliens is because the uh, advanced technology will kill the rest of the fuckers off, leaving one lone civilization standing eventually. And they're not doing it, you know, to be mean. They're just killing people off with their technology. Shit happens. And today we have someone saying, first of all, they said what I believe. The Drake equation is bullshit. Plain and simple. We don't need it. Get rid. Don't even publish the shit anymore. We don't. We are so far ahead of the uh, Drake equation right now. Just based on the amount of planets that uh, our space telescopes. Telescopes. Telescope, uh, Tuesday, that our space telescopes have been finding, we are we've blown the Drake equation away. It's uh, it's useless. But apparently, there's a group of scientists at the University of Nottingham. Yes, Nottingham. Yes, I said it because it's real. It's a real place. It's not Robin Hood or the Merry Men. But they might as well go by this. The article is talking about this uh, this group of scientists who put together a paper really talks about the new cosmic evolution. And it's a calculation, and um, but more of an estimation that suggests likely there's going to be 36 ongoing intelligent civilizations in our Milky Way galaxy. The funny thing is, is that the Milky Way galaxy is estimated to have about 100 to 400 billion stars. Roughly one planet per star. But we know already. We know already from the things that uh, get reported by scientists 
who are looking to the sky using these space telescopes that a lot of times they find stars with multiple planets in their solar systems. So this, again, is an assumption that that's what they average out to. But even in this article, they say it could be a lot more. Now, it is a big leap to go from 100 billion to 400 billion stars. Can you fucking guys get closer? That's a 300 billion difference. You you got to be able to get a little closer than that because the margin of error there is really high, like you guys. Uh, basically, this was published in the Astrophysical Journal, and uh, what the paper is examining is the likelihood that there are communicating extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, C-E-T-I, civilizations in, in the Milky Way. The assumption basically says that around 5 billion years for intelligent life to form on any given solar system, which is comparable to life on Earth, which is 4.5 billion years. You guys take out your calculators. And then there's another maybe uh, 100 years for a technological civilization to develop. Again, we're talking about us here. They're basically comparing our development and superimposing this on 400 billion of stars in our own galaxy. But what else can you do? You have no other way of doing this, to be honest, and I understand perfectly. So the calculation says that there could be 36 active communicating intelligent civilizations in our home galaxy, uh, which um, is about 4.5 billion years old or more, and they could have Earth-like planets around sun-like suns. And this calculation is called the Astrobiological Copernican Limit. So what they take into account, star formation histories, how common metal-rich stars are, like the sun, and the likelihood the stars hosting planet Earth-like planets in their habitable or Goldilocks zone. That is fantastic. But the thing is, there's a big difference from going from our galaxy to the universe. The difference is significant. So people would say, oh, 36 civilizations, oh, great. Finally, we've got some kind of, you know, vindication. You know, kind of like To the Stars Day when those three videos came out released by the government. Yippee, we're, we're here, we've arrived. Here's the math. This is really important because these scientists are not saying that 36 is the number that we should be uh, looking for. Because even in their calculations, they say 36 in the Milky Way is a minimum, not the maximum. It is the minimum. But here is something else you should also consider. The Milky Way is approximately 200,000 light years in diameter. It's fucking big as hell. All right, it's huge. There's a lot of stuff we can't see in it. It is very possible that this 36 might be 360. We don't know for sure. We just started a calculation. But let's take this one step further. In 2016, the number of the uh, galaxies in the observable universe, now you need your calculators, please take it out, um, was an estimate of 200 billion. Observable universe. That means only the shit we can see with our sucky ass uh, hair, hairy ape eyeballs right the I mean we got what we got we don't see every single wavelength of light only visible light but that changed in 2016 in 2016 that number became two trillion two trillion galaxies in the universe from what we can see multiply that by 36. Let's assume that there's 36 in each one of those galaxies. We're talking about 72 trillion civilizations in the universe. The number is significant. It is astonishing. So it is very difficult to argue with um, the idea 
or to even, even accept that there are no civilizations anywhere else using these calculations. The fact is we just we just don't understand, other than from our own perspective, how life develops. But 72 trillion potential civilizations out there, they have reached the technology to communicate that's significant. That is, again, huge. So don't take the 36 and thinking, well, this huge. we'll never find out who the fuck they are or where they're going or why they come here or why they do this. No. Take that number and expand that to the rest of the universe. And then you'll see. We are not just al- not alone. The fucking universe is crowded. There's too many fuckers out here. There's more on this article in the description. This is a good one to read, to be honest. I mean, let, let's let's be truthful here. There are many of you, even listening right now, that understand that some UFOs are, are just, they're too impossibly advanced. And there are some of you who have been experiencers. You've seen things, you've felt things, you've been part of things that you can't explain. And there's people out there that experience this on a daily basis when it comes to uh, stories of abduction and things like that. I would think that if you had had the 72 trillion fucking people, civilizations out there, 10% of those fuckers are getting around, doing the rounds, going places, and why wouldn't they be interested in the little blue meatball? It's hard to say no, that this isn't happening, when the numbers really are significant staggering, and they're staggering, and they're huge, And um, what can you do? This could be the end of the world.
This next story was my setup, because I just finished telling you that there are potentially a minimum of 72 trillion civilizations in the universe. And I said that so that I can now tell you minus one, because you, myself, Bugs, everyone else listening, and those that don't give two shits, are fucked. June 21st, apparently the Mayans done did it again, and they're saying that the uh, planet will end June 21st, so kiss your asses goodbyes. No more COVID worries. We're not even going to make it to the election here in the U.S. Nothing. As a matter of fact, the sad thing is, we ain't even find fucking Flight 380. We don't know where the hell that plane's at. How many years has it been? Yeah, we don't have to worry about any of those things, because June 21st, the Mayans have predicted that uh, Nibiru is going to kill us off. Now, as much as science has been trying to find the damn fucking planet, Planet 9, Planet X, Nibiru, apparently we have not that much more to wait. Five days. Five, listen, if you, if you got a sucky-ass job, you quit. Do it now. You feel like your life is terrible? Live it up. Take everything out of your account. Drain out the 401k. Do whatever you got to do because you've got five days. And then we will be 72 trillion minus one less in the the universe. Thanks to this individual who has been studying the sky as of late. And it's not even Pareidolia Pete. This was surprising to me. Yeah. The end of the world on June 21st, video claims the Nibiru system is right in front of our eyeballs. We're missing it. We are completely missing it. But it might not be our fault, according to this. Planet X is going to be here, and there's nothing we can do. There's a video that was posted by Gabriela Stardust. I mean, with a name like that, really, hey. Why wouldn't you believe her? I mean, come on. Gabriela knows. She says, I, by by the way, I'm going to just, let me just preface this real quick. So let's pull the brakes, pump the brakes on this. Um, Gabriella, her English, her English, <laughs> Gabriella's English and my English are pretty bad because uh, I'm I'm reading what she posted and it's uh, it's really difficult. But anyway, uh, what she said was this: I didn't expect too much tonight, but filming our skies, but like it is in our lives, <laughs> always expect the unexpected and be amazed how they can hide and manipulate our skies with those chemtrails and geoengineering. According to Gabriella, she's posted a video that um, shows without a shadow... Thanks, Bugs. Without a shadow of a doubt that chemtrails are being used to mask the arriving Nibiru. Yeah. She says she was surprised because she actually had to go back and evaluate her recordings to notice that she captured more than five planetary objects within her 25-minute recording. Here's a quote from Gabriela Stardust. She sounds like a stripper. This might be her part-time job as far as looking to the skies, kind of like Paridolia Pete. She said this, in between the dollars, the objects were clearly <laughs> clearly to see to the 2 and 3 o'clock position of the sun, very small looking yellow light emitting moon, and 2 to 3 brownish looking planetary objects right above the electrical sun. She did use the word electrical. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, But according to this, the fact is that uh, the chemtrails are being, how could I say, laid through the sky in order to effectively hide the colors that Gabriella found in her video. She says that that is the plan. Now, who is putting the plan together yeah, it makes no sense to me because she really doesn't say it, at least not in this article. But uh, basically, the chemtrails are using colors that adjust to these planetary objects. 
which make them almost impossible to catch with the naked eye. This is amazing, folks. Groundbreaking five days, you're 4.2 far fucked. Okay. So according to this, Nibiru is supposed to arrive and uh, the arrival coincides with the annular eclipse of the sun that will create a beautiful ring of fire as an effect in the sky. But thanks to the chemtrails, we really won't see many of that because we'll be dead June 21st. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Uh, there's, there's more to this article. I don't. I really don't understand. It's like Gabriella has kind of missed everything that's happened since uh, 2012. Like, no one has no fucks for the Mayan calendar at this point. And as a matter of fact, most of the translations say that basically there's just a new beginning. Not that everything was going to end. Right, Bugs? Just a new beginning. But Stardust is still working on it. But if you're interested in, you know, joining in on the end of the planet in five days, please look at the link in the description. Check out her video as she examines the way chemtrails are masking the the impending doom. The bureau's arriving and we are all fucked. I don't know how many of you are going to run out tomorrow and quit your jobs, not even uh, uh, save any money anymore. You're going to sell everything. Just go freaking bonkers. And then on the 22nd, I don't know what's going to happen to you. But uh, shit, that's freaking nuts. Check out Gabriella. Uh, this is the end of the podcast. That's the third one for today. Tomorrow we go to space because there is a lot of news regarding Musk, Starship, Okay, potentially, for some of you guys who want to get into the Starlink biz, there might be a way for you to get in on a beta test. We'll talk about that tomorrow because it sounds really exciting. In the meantime, I appreciate you guys listening to all my crazy madness. I'm planning my retirement from podcasting. We'll see what happens. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work a few more years before this even pays out.